Good day, grade 12. Welcome to this next lesson in mathematics. I hope that you've had an awesome week and that you are ready to get going with your um, weekend. And I hope that, sorry to be a miserable typical teacher, but I hope that you're using this time to, to study because your finals are right here around the corner, or your prelims are anyway. And actual fact, I actually think the prelims are almost more important than the finals for the simple reason that if you can do okay in the prelims, you're going to be fine in the finals. Okay, so we were busy working through the Doppler effect. Um, and we were working through the Doppler effect. Um, so, um, okay, I just need to pause for a second. So. Sorry about that, but there was a bit of a problem with the um, <clears throat> the internet, and I just wanted to sort that out. Um, okay, so we're going to be talking about the Doppler effect, um, and we need to start with ultrasound and the Doppler effect. Okay, I've taught you all about how to use the equation. Um, now, I want to talk to you about practical applications. Um, so, let us talk about it. First of all, ultrasound waves, which are also called ultrasonic waves, um, are, just a second, ultrasound waves which are also called ultrasonic, okay, are sound waves, the frequency greater than 20,000 hertz. So, that is higher than we can hear, that is higher than Oh, sorry, now look what's happening to the pen. Let's just try again. That is higher than we can hear. We can hear. Okay. Um, so now the thing is that these waves are used in medicine to determine the direction of blood. Okay, so I've got a little video here that shows you how it works. Okay, so let's have a look. Basic, uh, first, hang on, wait before we carry on. Let me show you what's going on. Um, first, let me just erase all the ink. Okay, so now what you've got here, and the, okay, let's just see. At the moment, what you're doing is you're seeing the flow of blood. So what they've got, let me just pause it, is they've got, when you go and get, for example, the rate at which your blood is flowing measured using ultrasound. Okay, now listen, there are two things about ultrasound you need to know. The first is that ultrasound can be used either as um, a Doppler effect, or it can be used um, normally. Now, if you are pregnant or one is pregnant and um, you want to go see if what the baby looks like or just see if the baby is there, then you use a normal ultrasound, okay? Because that ultrasound just reflects um, the actual image, it reflects the, uh, the signal just like this. So there would be a receive beam and a transmit beam and a receive beam. And what is reflected is what we see, okay? However, with a Doppler ultrasound, what they're doing is they measure the rate, the time it takes, and with the difference in frequency that the received beam is from the transmitted beam. And from that, they can measure the speed at which the blood is pumping or the rate at which the heart, um, baby's heart is beating. So let me explain again. If they say to you, how do they use the Doppler ultrasound um, how do they use the Doppler ultrasound in medical practice? You need to not just say, oh, to see if the baby is there. You need to say, actually, it's to see if the baby's heart rate is okay, or it's to see the rate at which your blood is flowing. And what do they use it for when they want to know the rate of heart blood? Well, you think, well, why would they do that? They can just measure using other instruments. Well, it's very cool in finding out 
where you have a blockage. So say, say for example, you have a blockage over here. Okay, when you have a blockage, it doesn't mean there's a total blockage. What it usually means is, let me just erase that and let's try again, is that it will build up and it will end up being a little bit narrower. So what will happen is the blood might be flowing very fast over here and over here it's flowing very slowly or over here it's flowing very slowly. So what they can do is they can actually use this Doppler ultrasound to identify exactly where this blockage is and then it's very clever because then what they use is they use an endoscope which is a piece of equipment which they push through okay and then they put like a little balloon in here okay and then what they do is, which is open on both sides and then they blate it means they blow it up and what happens is this actually pushes um, the sides open, okay, and it reinforces the sides. It keeps these veins or these arteries nice and safe. And that's what a lot of times happens if you've got a blockage in your arteries near your heart. Is that how they fix it? Okay, so getting back to this, this is what's exactly happening here is that you've got this transmit beam and the receive beam. Okay, let me just erase all the ink so we don't have it over our picture. And let's carry on. So as this is transmitted. This is transmitted on one frequency and this is reflected on another frequency. And this measures the difference in the frequencies. And therefore, it can tell us not only the direction the blood is flowing, but how quickly the blood is flowing, for example. So when we see the picture, which um, you're going to see in a second, or it was in a second, uh, so there we go. So if you see this picture here, what's happening is the red is the blood flowing in one direction and the blue is the fl blood flowing in the other direction. And this is actually a very cool picture because as far as I understand, yeah, it is. There's a baby here and what is actually, not that you can see the baby, but often you can't. But what you're looking at here is looking at the flow of blood to and from the baby via the placenta. Okay, so you can see that there's actually a very good flow of nutrients and blood flow from there, there you can possibly see the eyes and the nose and the mouth there this here is its placenta which is the way the the mother's body feeds the baby and you can see that it's actually flowing very well okay so now let's have a look at the next slide so the next slide is to do with the Doppler effect with light okay and this is the other typical science type thing that you need to know about Okay, so the other science stuff thing you need to know about is the fact that they often talk about redshift and blue shift with respect to the Doppler effect. I'm sorry, this thing's causing hassles again. I'm going to have to just pause for a second. Just wait a second, please. Right, so the Doppler effect with light, um, I'm hoping that you're getting this. It's saying that it's orange going to white, so I'm hoping it's a bit better. It says the frequency shift of light in the visible spectrum could result in a change of color, which could be observable with the naked eye. Okay, so again, we're looking at an apparent shift in frequency, which results in possible change in, in color. Now, what you need to understand, and this is very important, is that when we were talking about sound, remember we said that a high pitch was a high frequency. So it's like this, with high pitch, high frequency, whereas down over here, it's low pitch and low frequency, okay? So now, with light, the frequency matches colors, okay? So your equation, for light, okay, we know this is V is equal to, to lambda frequency. That is your equation for waves, okay? When we're talking about light, we talk about C is equal to frequency times lambda, because C is your constant for light, which is eight times by 10, sorry, three times by 10 to the eight, shame. Um, sorry, it's three 
times by 10 to 8 meters per second. And that is constant in basically um, the atmosphere and in the vacuum. Therefore, frequency and wavelengths are inversely proportional. So as the frequency increases, so your wavelength decreases, right? So this is part of the spectrum, the electromagnetic spectrum, and this is the visible part, okay? We've got your violet, blue, green, yellow, and red. It works out red, orange, yellow, green, blue, indigo, violet. Okay, where ultraviolet is obviously the higher frequency and infrared is the lower frequency. But now look at the wavelengths. Do you see that the wavelengths are getting bigger as we go further down? So the wavelengths are getting larger, okay, but what's happening to the frequency? The frequency then is getting lower. Okay, so shifts towards the longer wavelengths are said to be red shifts. So if we see light, if we see that there's an observable change in the color of the light towards the red, then we say that it's been red shifted. If it's shifted towards the shorter wavelengths, then we say it's blue shifted. Okay, so what is that going to do with science and the Doppler effect? Well, all stars give off light. And what happens is your scientists can analyze this light to see what elements are present, okay? Now, you guys are in grade 12, you're in your, almost your, almost at the end, so you guys should know about the line emission spectra and the line, um, and the absorption spectra. This here is obviously um, a line emission spectrum. It's only giving off the lines of, that re are relevant to hydrogen, okay? So this, is the spectral, um, what do you call it, fingerprint of hydrogen, okay? So what happens is, is that the scientists, okay, I don't know if you guys have ever watched CSI or something like that where the guy will say, oh, I put it into the mass spectrometer. I can see that there is iron and magnesium and calcium um, in it, and therefore it was obviously bought in shop B643 on this road. Okay, so the point is that a mass spectrometer, what it does is it burns the um, substance, okay, they destroy the substance by burning it, and when they burn it, there are two ways, they can either use a, get a line emission spectrum or a line absorption spectrum, okay, and in the next part of this um, revision section, I'll be going through photoelectric effect and we'll talk about how you get the different spectra, either line emission or line absorption. All you need to know is that for every element that we know in the universe, there is a specific line emission spectrum and a matching line absorption spectrum. So what this dude is saying is correct. He can, from burning it and sending light through it, tell which elements make up Okay, so most stars give off hydrogen, which is why they're showing the line emission spectrum. But now, what's interesting is that if these lines, and this is a normal, so if this is on Earth, this is if we burned hydrogen, we would get out a line emission spectrum, okay? And this is the line emission spectrum we would get out, okay? If these lines are observed to be shifted from their usual wavelengths, then we say that it's either it's been shifted, either blue shifted or um, red shifted. So in other words, if we now look at um, the emission spectrum of a star and we see that the lines are not where they're supposed to be, let's say that the lines are yeah, and they still match, they've just been moved over, yeah, and yeah, and the red line would be about over here. So all that's happened is you can see that the whole spectrum just has been moved over a little bit, okay? But which way has it moved? Has it moved to the left, the, the blue side or the right side, or the red side? So we can see that this spectrum has moved over to the blue side. So therefore we can say that the light has been blue shifted, okay? So if it's been blue shifted, it's moved what? What did we say? If it's blue shifted, it's moved towards the shorter wavelengths. So it's moved towards the shorter wavelengths. 
but we know that C is equal to frequency wavelength, right? So if the wavelength is shorter, what has happened to the frequency? The frequency has got higher, and therefore we know that this star is coming towards us or we are moving towards it. Okay, the point is that we are moving closer together because if the frequency is higher, we know that it's coming towards us, right? However, however, if we look at the new spectrum and we see that the new spectrum looks like this. So here's my new one. And I'm just making it a bit thicker so you can see which one's the new one. And here's the new one. And obviously it'll be the same colors. I just don't have matching colors. And here's the new one. Now we can see that it's obviously been redshifted. Okay, it's been redshifted. So if it's been redshifted, what's happened? It's moving to the longer wavelengths, right? It's moving to the longer wavelengths. So if it's longer wavelengths, what is happening? The wavelengths are going up. What's happening to the frequency? The frequency is decreasing. And what do we know about frequency decreasing? It means it's moving away. Okay, so what is that going to do with the universe expanding? Well, what has happened is that the scientists have gone and analyzed the light from the stars all around us. They've looked all the way around the planet, every part of the universe that we can see, the viewable, this part of the universe that we can see, because obviously the huge parts of the universe that we cannot see from straight from Earth, okay? And they've noticed that on the whole, okay, this light from the stars is being redshifted. In other words, what they do is they look at the light from the star today, okay? Then next year, they go and look at the light from exactly that same star again, and they'll notice that the light from the spectrum is moved slightly to the right, so it's been redshifted. Then they go look at it again the next year, and you see it's even further redshifted. So what do they know? They know that that star is moving away. But now what they've done is they've gone and looked at all the stars all the way around us, and they've all been redshifted. So what can they tell? What does that tell us? That tells us that either we're very smelly, which I don't think the stars can smell, or that the universe is expanding. The universe is expanding. Okay, which is pretty impressive. So that's where the Big Bang Theory comes from, because and I don't mean the movie, the TV show. I'm talking about the theory which states that um, obviously if the universe is expanding, that at some point all of it should have been compressed into a point and there should have been therefore a huge explosion which caused um, the universe and therefore caused life on Earth, etc., etc. Okay, we're not going to get into that. We don't need to. Okay, but what is interesting as well is that the middle star of Orion's belt is actually a dual star, it's a duplex star. And the way they worked that out was that they were looking at the star. And what was interesting was that when they looked at it, sometimes the light from the star would be blue shifted, and sometimes it'd be red shifted, and sometimes blue shifted, and sometimes red shifted, okay? And then they realized that it was just blue shifting and red shifting on a regular pattern, okay? So, what they thought initially was that there was one star that was wobbling on its axis, but then they realized that in fact it was going too fast for that to happen, okay, and the gap between the blue shifting and the red shifting was too long. And then what they realized was that the fact what was happening is that there was one star over here that was red shifting and another star over here, actually it's the other way around, but anyway, that was blue shifting. It's not the other way around, it just depends on how you think of it. Okay, and what was happening is they were overlapping each other. So at one point we would see it red shift and the other side we would see it blue shift. It doesn't work in a perfect circle, it's more like a little bit of an ellipse. So at one point we would see the red one and then the other side we would see the blue one. Now please understand, the stars aren't actually red and blue. I'm talking about the light being red shifted or blue shifted, depending on whether those stars were coming towards us or going away from us. And that's how they really that there were actually two stars in that system, which is pretty cool. Okay, now I know a lot of you think that 
a lot of this is well, why bother? But now that there's this huge trend for everybody to go live in Mars, this stuff actually makes a quite a big difference. Okay, so now what I've done is I've downloaded a couple of more questions on the Doppler effect. A lot of the questions are specifically about the applications that we've been speaking about. But then while I was downloading the Doppler effect questions, I discovered one or two questions which are quite nice, which we actually hadn't done. So what I've done is I've included those as well. Okay, so this hopefully will be the last lesson on the Doppler effect. And then we've just got the photoelectric effect to do whoop whoop. And then we have finished the whole of the Grow 12 curriculum. And then I can start revision with exam paper questions specifically on specific areas. So if you guys have got specific areas that you'd like me to cover after the photoelectric effect, please let me know. Okay, let's go through this. It says a study of spectral lines obtained from various stars can provide information about the movement of the stars. The diagram, two diagrams below, represent different spectral lines of an element. Okay, I'm sorry, I need to cough. So just hold on for half a second. Sorry, guys. Okay, the two diagrams below represent different spectral lines and elements. It's the same element, different spectral lines. Diagram one represents the spectrum of the element in the lab on Earth. So this is kind of like a control. Okay, this is a control. Diagram two represents the same element on a different star. Okay, so you can see that it's actually got the same line gaps, okay? There's two that are close together and one far apart, two close together. And I would guess it's hydrogen, but you don't need to know that. It says, is the star moving towards or away from Earth? Below, explain the answer referring to the shifts in the spectral lines in the two diagrams above. Okay, so let's talk about this. Do you agree that the lines for this light from the star... are blue shifted, are definitely blue shifted, okay, they are definitely blue shifted, okay, they are moving, this is going up that way, this is going this way, and this is going this way, so they're definitely being blue shifted, okay, now, now, we need to think about this. Now, I know we were talking about wavelengths, but some of you might find it a bit easier to think of it this way. We've got Roy, G, Biv, and then you've got ultraviolet, and you've got infrared. Now, I know that some of my students struggle to think with a red, because red is quite a bright color, they tend to think that red's going to have a higher frequency than violet, but violet, you need to think that ultraviolet is next to ultraviolet, and ultraviolet definitely has more energy than infrared. Okay, ultraviolet, think of the ultra word. Ultra means like ultramarathon. It's bigger than infrared, okay? So ultraviolet definitely is a higher frequency than this one, okay? So therefore, do you agree that this, if it's been blue shifted, it's going to a higher, going to a higher frequency, okay? And if it's going to be going to a higher frequency, what is it? It is moving towards the Earth. It is moving towards the Earth. There you go. So that's how you would explain this. Okay. Now let's look at this question. I just want to change color. It says the Doppler effect could be used the same type of thing. Okay, so again, you've got diagrams one and two, but this time it's beautifully in color. Um, okay. So diagram one represents the absorption lines or optical spectrum of the sun. This is the sun. This one represents the absorption lines or optical spectrum of supercluster in the distant galaxies. So this is distant, distant galaxies. Okay. So what can you see? You can see that, remember that the sun is a star as well. Please don't get confused with that, okay? 
Now, so you can see that here's the light from the sun and here's the light from the different distant galaxies, okay? It says, are the stars moving towards or away from the sun? Explain the answer by showing, sure. okay, right. So do you agree that this has been red shifted? This line is going to more towards the red, this is going more towards the red, etc., etc. Even sweetly drew arrows to show you that it's moving to the red end. So therefore we can say that they're moving away from the sun. And why? Because the light has been red shifted which is at a lower frequency, okay? So therefore, it is being redshifted. Okay, now it says, from the comparison of these two diagrams above, what conclusion can be made about the universe? They're wanting you to say that the universe is expanding. Universe is expanding. Or just that the galaxies are moving away. Right, now let's do something a little bit different. Um, I like this question because we haven't done anything with respect to um, graphs and there's a nice pressure time graph here. So I thought it might be nice and interesting to do a different type of question, but this is a Doppler effect question and it does come out of an old um, exam paper from the government. So let's go through it. It says a man mounts a siren which produces a constant frequency of 800 hertz. Okay, so he's got a frequency of 800 hertz on the roof of his car. He drives at a constant speed up and down the same road while a stationary learner measures the observed sound. Okay, at a, at a certain stage of the journey, the learner obtains the following pressure time graph of the sound wave. Okay, so this is interesting because do you agree we haven't actually spoken about pressure yet? Okay, we've just spoken about, um, well, we haven't actually spoken about pressure at all. We've spoken about um, time and frequency and velocity, but never about pressure. Okay, now the next thing it says is what is the period of the detected sound wave? Well, the period is the time it takes to complete one total wave. Okay, so do you agree that the time would be from year to year? Okay. So we know that it takes 2.5 seconds to go there, another 2.5 seconds to go there to get to 5, another 2.5. So obviously this is going to be 1. But you've got to be careful. You've got to look at your units, okay? So therefore the period of the wave is 1 times by 10 to the negative 4 seconds. 1 times by 10 to the negative 4 seconds. Cool. Now it says... Calculate the frequency of the detected wave, sound wave. Please note that this is the, um, the, the, per, the pressure wave of the detected wave. This is detected, not what was actually measured, okay? So do you agree that period is equal to 1 over frequency? I know, grade 12, that you were taught this in... Um, you were taught this in grade 10, and now you're in grade 12, but you can't just forget about these formula, and they are on your formula sheet. Okay, so we've got the period. The period is 1 times by 10 to negative 4. So therefore, we can say frequency is 1 divided by 1 times by 10 to the negative 4. So we can get out our calculator, and we can go 1 divided by 1 exponent negative um and i can get there negative four equals ten thousand sure let me just check here that is revenue so therefore the frequency is ten thousand hertz sure that's quite a big frequency here the frequency is 10,000. Now to state the Doppler effect in words, okay. So we know what the Doppler effect is in words. It's apparent change in frequency due to the uh, relative motion of the source and the, um, and the observer. But now the reason they state in that is to give you the hint that you need to be using the Doppler effect in the next question or the next two questions. Okay, that's the hint. 
This you know, okay, we've done it several times, but this is a hint as to what we're going to be, oh, sorry, what we're going to be using. Okay, so now let's read. It says, calculate the speed of the moving car. Take the speed of sound in air to be 340 meters per second. Okay, so let's think about this. We know F of L is equal to V plus or minus V of the listener over V plus or minus V of the source F of S. Okay, we know the frequency the listener heard. It was 10,000. This is FL. We know FS. It's 800. They gave it to us. We've got this. Okay, and we want the velocity of the moving car, which is the source. And the listener is stationary, so VL is zero. So let's fill that in. We've got 10,000. V is 340. Over, this is 340 plus or minus VS all over f of s which is 800 okay now do you agree that 10,000 is a heck of a lot bigger than 800 so do you agree that we need this numerator to be way bigger than denominator so this has to be a minus okay so now let's rearrange we can go 10,000 divided by 800 is equal to 340 over 340 minus Vs. We can flick both sides. So we got 800 over 10,000 is equal to 340 minus Vs over 340. These two cancel, which is quite nice. And now we can cross multiply and we get 8 over 100 multiplied by 340 over 1 is equal to 340 minus Vs. So this cancels with this, okay? And we can divide both by, okay, so we can just put this in our calculator. I don't know why I'm doing this. So we can say, uh, clear, 8 divided by 10 multiplied by 340 equals 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 272 so we've got 272 is equal to 340 minus vs right so we can take it to the other side and we go minus 340 equals 68 so it goes minus six oh it's right over here minus 68 is equal to negative Vs. Therefore, if we cancel that, we've got 68 meters per second, which is very fast, is equal to Vs. So this guy is crazy. He's going at 668 meters per second. Okay, it's very fast. Okay, but that's cool. Now it says, while the car is stationary, the frequency of the siren is changed to 900 hertz. Okay. Will the wavelength of the detected sound wave increase, decrease, or remain the same? Explain the answer. Okay, so we know that V is equal to lambda frequency. So your frequency's changed. Do you agree? The frequency's gone up. So what's going to happen to the wavelength? The wavelength must have gone down. So therefore, we can say that the while the Okay, will the wavelength of the detected sound wave increase, decrease, or remain the same? The wavelength of the detected sound is going to decrease. And why? Because the frequency of the sound has increased and therefore the wavelength will have decreased. Okay, right, let's look at the next question. Uh, let's just change color. It says, light emitted from distant stars just demonstrates a phenomenon known as redshift. Briefly describe what is meant by redshift in light emitted from different stars. Okay, so the reason I included this question is because they love, love, love asking questions where you have to explain things, okay? And 
I find that a lot of my students struggle with it, okay? So what do you need to say? It says, briefly describe what is meant by the red shift in light emitted from distant stars. All that you need to say is that the light from the different stars, the light spectrum from the different stars is moved towards the right side of the, I mean, to the red side of the spectrum. And therefore we say that the light is red shifted. That's it, nothing more, nothing less. You do not have to be all confusing. They didn't ask you what it meant by, um, they didn't ask you what red shifting of light means as in that the universe is expanding. They just wanted to know what they meant by the red shift in light, okay. Next question, 6.2, it says a line in the hydrogen absorption spectrum has a frequency of 3.6 times 10 to the 14 hertz. It's one of the lines and that's when it's measured in the lab. The same line in the absorption spectrum of a distant star has a frequency of 3.4 times 10 to the 14 hertz. So it's gone from 3.6 times by 10 to the 14 to 3.4 times 10 to the 14 hertz, okay? So what's happened to this frequency? Has it increased or decreased? So in the lab, in the lab, the frequency is 3.6 times 10 to the 14 hertz. And out in the universe, we're seeing it at 3,4 times 10 to the 14 hertz. So what has happened? Do you agree the frequency has decreased? So what's happened? If the frequency is decreased, it means the star is moving away. And this basically is how you would explain it. You would say the star is moving away. Why? Because the frequency of the line has decreased which means that the object is moving away. That's it. Next. Okay, let's talk about the racing car. It says a racing car with its headlights on. Okay, so here is your crappy drawing of a car. Um, ding, 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 ding. And here's its race light. And okay, there's a dude driving it and there's some doors. Okay, don't worry about it. I'm not an artist and there's wheels. Okay, is it approaching a spectator? Right, standing next to the strat, at a constant speed of 280 kilometers per hour. So what's wrong with that number? It's in kilometers per hour. Okay, it needs to be converted to meters per second. We'll worry about that in a second. The engine produces a sound frequency of 1,200 hertz. So the frequency of the engine is 1,200 hertz. Okay, it says, Briefly explain why there's no observed color change in the light from the headlights of the racing car while approaching the spectator. Well, think about this. Light travels at three times by 10 to the eight meters per second. If I convert this to meters per second, I've got 280 kilometers per hour. So I need to change this to meters, so I multiply by a thousand, but then I need to change this to seconds, so it's 3,600. So if I pop that in my calculator, and I know some of you guys have got a very fancy calculator that number 19 or number 20 at the back of your calculator is actually a conversion from kilometers to hours, but I have to warn you that if you're doing MBTs, you need to be able to do this in your head or just on a piece of paper, so be careful with that. So it's 280, oh, let's try it again, 280, multiplied by a thousand, okay, delete, one, one, two, two, three, equals, divide by 3,600, equals, SD, 77.77, so that equals 77,78 meters per second. Okay, so now, in that case, if you want to think of it relatively, the, the person's, this light is coming towards him now, instead of it three times by 10 to the eight meters per second, let's just write it out. It's three, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight meters per second. It's now coming towards him at three, zero, 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 seventy-seven comma seven, eight meters per second. Do you see that on the grand scheme of things, the 77.78 is so small compared to the three 
three times by 10 to the 8 meters per second, that it's not going to be observable. We won't be able to see it. It might change. The color might change, admittedly. Scientifically, mathematically, the color might change. But actually, in real life, we won't be able to see the difference. Okay, grade 12, so we're going to love and leave you at this point and just stop there. And we will continue um, in the next uh, lesson on Monday. Have a great weekend.